All the properties here in the district are built with masonry. So we have mostly stone um, houses, a couple of stone barns, which you can see um, in the barn behind us. Well, this is the inside of the bank barn where we keep hay and straw, a little bit of equipment in the main hallway. Use it all the time. Put hay and straw in here in the summertime. These are vents, lets the air come in and so the hay, when it's curing, it, it gets air to, to dry. And, and that was um, a traditional practice that both German heritage and English heritage brought over. And so it was really easy, especially in this part of the country and part of the state, um, to find just stones everywhere in the fields. And so they would find those stones, put them and build them in their houses or their barns. And then a lot of the bricks they would make um, on site and build their homes out of that. The wonder of, of a community as reflected in Peace and Plenty is that people are able to do much more together than they do separately. This district that we've established, the Peace and Plenty Historic District, would be very special in the sense that it could not just reflect the beauty of the structures and also uh, the landscape, but also reflect the deep commitment that each of these farmers have to the well-being of the entire community. The benefit for us is that it, it'll help us maintain and preserve these buildings for future generations. We believe that preserving farmland is key to preserving our country. This is where it starts. People need to be able to see the history and how they're fed. And that's actually what brought them together to form this, this historic district. Their interest in demonstrating not just the history of agriculture, not just the buildings, but what really is the inspiration of the farming community, which is collaboration and, and community. We can learn from the farming community. We can, we can embrace its culture of collaboration, and it would be of, of great interest uh, and great value to many communities throughout the country. What makes the farmhouse kind of special is that it has two very distinct traditions, the English and the German traditions, in pulling the house together. This is the oldest uh, wing of the farm. It was built in 1758. Uh, by English settlers who brought their own sense of architecture and design into the construction of this, this piece of the farmhouse. Over there we have the second wing, which is uh, dated 1799. It was built by a generation of, of uh, German settlers that came down from Philadelphia and uh, added their touch to what the entire farmhouse looked like. Back in the 1750s, Lord Baltimore was granting huge tracts of land to friends and colleagues. In these homes, we had doctors, we had lawyers, we had religious leaders, and were referred to as the rural elite. Now, in saying elite, it's very important to remind ourselves that much of the hard work of settling the area was done by enslaved persons. They must be recognized, they will be more fully recognized in time. We do have a cemetery within the district that is reputed to have unmarked graves for a number of slaves. Uh, we have records showing that when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, uh, 20, 30, 40 slaves walked off the farms around here and, and claimed their, their freedom and their liberty. So that's a story that needs to be told and thought about whenever you're talking about the rural elite and the benefits that they acquired through their settlement of this area. Stream anytime, anywhere with the free PB.